numbers are the foundation for growth. There, there are so many people that are working hard, but not efficiently. And, you know, I, I saw a post about this on the no nonsense cash flipping group just the other day. It's like, I thought I had a great month. I, I made like $9,000 in sales, but then my ending balance in my checking account was $400. And I'm like, okay, well, this guy, he is not grounded in a way that he can actually grow his business. He has no idea how much money he's making. He has no idea what his expenses actually are. He doesn't know how much money he's making gross on a flip. He doesn't know how much it costs to operate his business. And if you don't know these numbers like that, right, you're not doing it right. It's okay. Make a copy. Hit the green, make a copy button. Give it a second. All right, there you go. With this spreadsheet, if you guys haven't already had a, a chance to take a look, there are three workbooks, there are three tabs that are relevant. Well, there are four, including the instruction, right? So go to sales tracker. Okay, so you can see that this has been filled in with some sample data. Um, and so the way, the way you will operate within this spreadsheet is every time you purchase a couch, you log the transaction here. So you're going to put in the listing title or, you know, whatever unique identifier you want for your inventory. Maybe you have SKUs or you, you want to just use the brand name, whatever. So go to row 13, Ken, and let's start filling this out together. What is the most recent couch that you've sold? Um, most recent couch was a green section I sold yesterday. All right, type, type that in. Where'd you get it? Got it from Facebook. Great. Now from acquired from, select Facebook from the drop down. Where'd you sell it? Craigslist. Oh, Craigslist. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, when did you buy it? Um, bought it last, last Wednesday. So it's June 7th. June seventh. Okay, great. How much did you buy it for? One hundred. When did you sell it? Yesterday, right? So that would be June thirteenth. And then, how much did you sell it for? Six fifty. All right, there you go. That's a pretty pretty penny. Yeah. Now that you can see as you entered in uh, these values that the gross profit and turnover time columns automatically updated. So these columns are not locked, but generally you should not be entering in values in columns I and J. Those will be computed for you. Nice. Uh, and so all you need to do is whenever you make a sale and really whenever you buy something, you, you should add an entry into this workbook. And then when you sell it, you should update it as well. And that's going to help you keep track of your gross profit and how long it takes you to turn over a couch. Then go to ex the expenses tab in the bottom. Um, like, so when, when you talk about finances, right? Uh, and we're calculating gross margin, that's cost of goods and sale price. Right. Sale price minus cost of goods is your gross profit. But that that is not your that is not your net profit. Right. That is uh, your your profit accounting for how much it costs you to buy the thing that you sold. Your net profit also incorporates your other expenses of running the business. And so we want to track this as well. So, for example, let's say what is the how much do you pay for your storage unit? Do you have a storage unit, Ken? Storage unit, yeah, um, two thousand. All right, two dollars a month. Six, Sixteen hundred or one thousand one hundred is one of the storages, and six hundred is the other storage. So seventeen hundred. Okay, got it. So let's go to row fifteen. Hit the drop down. Storage. Yeah, it's a it's a drop down. You can just select it. Oh, got it. 
And then um, let's when, when do you get billed for that? Let's say the eleven $1 hundred dollars. Billed actually yesterday. All right, write down six thirteen. And then this one actually had uh, three storage units, so it was twelve hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now let's go to monthly PL. And so, like, guys, for expenses, it's everything uh, that, and, and as you're tracking these expenses, remember, these are all potentially deductions for you at the end of the tax year, at the end of the year. Uh, and so, it really does pay, pay dividends to be tracking expenses in a careful way, it'll save you prep time during taxes if you're paying taxes. Um, so as you can see, as you add line items to the sales tracker, and as you track your expenses, the monthly PL statement automatically updates. And so based on the test data that I imp that we input for February, January and February, you can see that gross sales, total amount of sales that were made in January, $4,200. The cost of goods, how much did you spend to buy couches in January? $850. What is your gross profit? $3,350. That's simply gross sales minus cost of goods. But then you have expenses, storage unit, cleaning supplies, gas, so on and so forth. What are your expenses? $2,100. That means your net profit is $1,250. Um, and let's say couch flipping is your only source of income, right? Well, one thing that you have to be careful of is tax withholding. It's like assuming that this is a legit business for you and you're paying taxes and you're incorporated, you should be, you should be paying taxes, right? Then you have to withhold 30% of that. That means out of that, you know, 1250 net profit, uh, let's say you have, you actually have 800, about $800 out of that 1250 that you can legitimately spend when you're withholding taxes correctly. Right. And then let's say you're making 800. I'm not going to tell you how to budget like in detail, but you know, 50% 50, 50 of your overall income that's your means to live within, right? So you you should be able to live a lifestyle. Not that you can actually do that at $400, right? I understand that. But the, the general principle is like 50% of what you make, take home after taxes is what you live on. 30% um, you're saving and then like 20% you're investing, something like that, right? 50, 30, 20 is a standard budgeting matrix. So. One thing I see all the time in the Facebook group, the no nonsense couch flipping group, people are like, I had an amazing month and they, they post their gross sales number. Like I did 40, 40 K in transactions this month. My question always is, well, how much money did you make? Right? How much can you live on? How much can you save? Uh, what is your net profit? And so it's really important to go a level deeper because I see people make this, like, especially early stage entrepreneurs make this mistake all the time. They think they're making a lot more money than they are, and they're not adequately accounting for various expenses that they're incurring along the way. And then a big problem for them is when the tax ban comes and you don't want to fuck with the government. I think we all know that, right? You can literally show up at your door, guns blazing, like you got to pay the government. Um, also in the spreadsheet, you can see various other statistics that should be useful for you. What is your average sale price, right? So when you list something, what is the average uh, like amount of money that you can sell something for or that you are selling something for? And Wait, what, what were the, um, the three percentages that you said right now? You said 30, 50, and what was the other one? Uh, 50, 50, 30, 20. And what's the 20 for? So 50% of your money goes towards like essential to live living. On. Yeah. Uh, the 20% you should save. 
Mm -hmm. And then 30%, let's say it's discretionary income that you can like, you know, take a vacation. You can save up for a big purchase. Uh, you know, you, you want to remodel your bathroom, right? Um, and then the savings, like generally you're taking that and investing that money, right? You're, you're, you're building your emergency fund. You're uh, putting money in a brokerage account, so on and so forth. So this is like basic budgetary advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Um, I can point you to some resources. Uh, one thing I would do if you, you're not already doing it, you're not already budgeting for your personal income, I would recommend that you do that. There are apps out there that, that are free that help you do this. So uh, I use Mint Mobile. I'm not sure, I'm sure you guys have heard of like Rocket Money, something like that. Uh, I think especially as an entrepreneur, you have to be disciplined with finances and budgeting because the money ebbs and flows. Right. And if you don't actually know your real cash value, you can get in trouble. Uh, and I've personally experienced this a number of times where you have a good month and you're like, oh, I just made nine thousand dollars. Right. Last month I made three. And then all of a sudden, like you're you're spending money, like you're making nine thousand dollars consistently. But then you have another bad month month and you're right back where you started. So this kind of financial tracking, gaining visibility into your overall finances, is extremely important. Now, Daniel and John and Jacob, <clears throat> the current way that you're tracking your finances, does it give you this level of visibility into the performance of your business? Um, I mean, the sales tracker is definitely very similar, but as far as this monthly P&L, that's the spot I'm like, wow, this would, this would really help out as far as breaking it down from gross sales, cost of goods, all that. And then seeing what are actually, I mean, we're getting our net profit, but we're not putting in a lot of the other expenses, like the other overhead is what we're, we're, we're really lacking. So if we start to implement a lot of the overhead that we have, then I guess that'll help us understand what that true net profit is. So yeah, it's definitely more helpful. Okay. 100% basically on the same page as that. Click on that link. If you haven't already make a copy, start inputting your transactions. I want all of you to have this information up to date for our next meeting, because really this is going to set the foundation for our conversation. I can't help you optimize your business. If I don't have a clear understanding of where your business actually is, then it's just here's, you know, he say, she say, you understand what I'm saying. I want to look at the real numbers to understand where you're really at. And then we can dig in a level deeper to start prescribing what are actually the problems. So for example, Ken, you might think that all I need to do to improve my business is X, but then we drill down and look at your finances. And then we realize that like your expenses are incredibly high compared to the rest of the group. And that makes sense that you're paying a lot for storage because you're in New York city and we have the highest, you know, real estate cost of any city in America. Um, but then, you know, based on that real understanding, what are the actual strategies that we can uh, utilize to hedge against that cost? Maybe we can become more space efficient. Maybe your flipping strategy has to change because you don't have, you know, the same amount of space like someone out in Dallas. And so you need to focus on different kinds of inventory, right? Ones that take up less space. Maybe we're focusing a little bit more on like designer pieces. Uh, you're not going for low margin flips. You have to focus on things that have higher turnover, right? Because you, can't, you, you simply don't have the real estate to sit on something for seven days. And you, know, you can see in column K, we're calculating turnover time. How long do you sit on inventory before it flips, right? This is important because when you're paying for a storage unit, you're paying for space. Let's say you're paying $1,100 for a storage unit. You can fit five sectionals in there. You have one sectional that, you know, has been sitting in there for two weeks, four weeks, right? Well, that's literally 20% cost to you every, every day that like, you know, if that, if that sits in your, your storage unit for a month, you've lost 20% of the cost of your storage unit roughly, right? So you, you, you think you make, you know, oh, I bought it for 200, I sold it for 500. I'm going to make $300. Actually your entire profit is wiped out by your storage cost. 
And that's why we're computing things like turnover time. 